Molliver. I'm Alana. And I'm Sergio. And we're Aid Feature Script. So, a little bit about Aid itself, or the Agua Clara Infrastructure Design Engine. One problem that we've faced since the beginning of Agua Clara is the fact that a lot of different communities are going to have different populations and different sizes. So they all are going to need a different uh, drinking water treatment plant design for them. And so that's what we need to plan for. AID allows us to automatically redesign our plant designs so that we can take in a single variable, which is flow rate, run calculations, and then redesign the entire 3D model of the plant for that community. So the way that AID works is it is a system of interconnected modules. And so this semester, we're still using Onshape to build our plant designs, but we have moved to a slightly different structure for the coding side. So our new structure is a bit more linear than in previous semesters. And so AID Python is still going to be writing code to calculate um, plant designs within Python. And so AID FeatureScript is going to be replicating the Python code within FeatureScript so that it can be used in Onshape. Calculations from FeatureScript then move into our CAD models, which are built by AID Onshape. And these completed designs are finally uh, input into a documentation engine in Python, which will provide instructions for constructing the plan. So now on to more specifically AID FeatureScript. So again, the purpose of aid feature script is to write these custom on shape feature types in order to calculate what is the best plant uh, design for a given community. And so these features can be uh, inserted into our existing CAD models built by the on shape team. And feature script is a relatively new programming language that's a part of the on shape platform. And it's really powerful when we use it in combination with these on shape 3D models. And so one reason why this we can see this is because it's much easier for FeatureScript than Python to manage data within Onshape. And so we can see that with just a single line of FeatureScript code in this set variable function, we can safely configure the entire CAD model that you can see on the right. And we can also easily pull um, measurements from part studios, which is super helpful when we want to partially design a component, gather some measurements of what it looks like, and then finally go back and complete the final um, optimized design. FeatureScript also makes it really easy to share knowledge between components, which is good for designing the entire plan and ensuring all the components work together. Another reason why is because it becomes really easy to add um, the correct inputs that are needed within our feature type. So this is because on a uh, feature script comes with a built-in user interface. If we were to do this in Python, we would have to code up this entire thing, but uh, with only these few lines of code, we're able to create a very competent GUI, which will allow new users to easily be able to use aid. And so just to recap, aid Onshape is building 3D models within Onshape part studios. And so what we're doing is we're writing custom feature types using feature script. And so feature types can include things like sketch, extrude, or fillet. And there are some of the operations that you can make in a part studio. And they're also analogous to classes within object-oriented programming. And features are just instances of these feature types within part studios. So you can see this is like an instance of a feature here on the screen. And they're analogous to objects within object-oriented programming. We worked on a toy problem that assimilated the structure of an actual plant. And this is a screenshot of what we built for the toy problem. Toy problem is meant to simulate a very basic examples of what the overall feature script code for the entire plant would look like. We worked through a toy problem to test out different methods of writing features. And first, we started from creating bin design feature, in which we wrote feature script code to design single components. Once you have single components designed, we use SuperDerive to design multiple components for the main component. A regular derive takes a part from Part Studio and puts it into scope. However, we, what SuperDerive does is that it allows the users to change the configuration of a derived Part Studio through JSON string. For the extension of the Tor problem, we wanted to connect configuration from one subcomponent with another subcomponent. 
What it really means is that we tried for a main component to use calculated values in one subcomponent to determine the dimensions of another subcomponent. Okay. We learned how to use feature script to configure individual 3D models, and the diagram describes how we interact with eight Onshape. Onshape team builds 3D CAD model using configurations, and we take input of flow rate or temperature to use feature that can change configuration of the 3D Onshape model. If it gets to more than one component, feature script takes an input of flow or temperature, sets variables to change configuration in main component of CAD, and there we can use feature script to change configuration of subcomponents of CAD model. And here, as you can see in the diagram, for the single component, we can use a feature script code to set variables and change configuration in uh, Flocculator Part Studio. However, when there's multiple subcomponents, we can use the code to set variables and change the configuration in sedimentary part studio, which is the main subcomponent. And also we can change configuration in set channel part studio and set tank part studio, which are the subcomponents. We wrote a function that allowed us to send data into nested super derive with encoded strings. For example, here we want to super derive parts and sedimentation tank within sedimentary part studio. We needed to send encoded data from feature script into this inner part studio. So first we wrote one function in order to super derive parts, and we wrote the second function that can create nested super derive up to whatever level of super derive we need. And this is how the configuration looks like in sedimentation tank part studio. And however, as the part gets super derived, the configuration will look something like this in sedimentary part studio. The first function that I mentioned in the previous slide made the values into this form, and the second function added the backslashes in order to super derive into one level. And this way, all the super derived parts with parts within Sedimentor Part Studio can create the whole Sedimentor itself. So we ran into difficulties with running certain design processes uh, using features, which was that f um, within feature scripts, features are run sequentially. So meaning they only go in one direction, they have to go forward, but we needed them to go back and forth between determining measurements um, in the Part Studio. Um, and one example of this is with the, flo the flocculator, which um, to calculate its volume requires this. So another challenge we faced was um, that when we design parent components that require subcomponents, um, we wouldn't be able to go back and forth. Um, and this, an example of this is a sedimenter, which has a sedimentation channel and a set of sedimentation tanks. And basically the sedimenter depends on the sedimentation channel and the sedimentation tanks. Um, so it requires to go back and forth in order to design the sedimenter, um, and we really couldn't figure this out. So we had to um, design a model which we would be able to go back and forth between the two easily. Um, and so we designed this auxiliary part studio um, to run calculations, which basically required creating an extra auxiliary um, an extra auxiliary part studio, which would basically super derive variables from the two subcomponents and within the auxiliary part studio it would then calculate um, certain calculations based off these variables and send them to the parent component and then afterwards the parent component would super derive the uh, component geometry from the subcomponents however we actually realized that we didn't need this auxiliary part studio and we could simply just within the parent component super derive variables um, needed for calculation from the subcomponents, and then the parent component would be able to simply uh, calculate them within its own part studio. And then finally, it would be able to super derive um, the geometry of the subcomponents. And so what we're doing now with this design is we're simply trying to transfer um, the Python code over to, the, over to feature script. And as you can see, it's not going to be as easy as copying and pasting because they're two different languages. And not only that, but for the future, we'll also have to implement um, this new structure without the benefits of object-oriented programming like Python has, um, which will be a challenge. 
but once we have our feature types programmed, um, we'll have to in in integrate them um, with our on-shape CAD models. And through the toy problem, this actually shouldn't be too difficult um, because uh, we can simply edit existing configuration variables that were made by aid on shape. Um, and so we're really looking forward to, to seeing how FeatureScript can help us um, in this whole design process. So if you have any questions and recommendations, uh, please, pre please let us know.